How's it going, everyone? Good to see everyone here. I just have to make a post real quick so that everyone can find this from the Patreon group here. So I want to talk about the market here. Uh, just talk for you know, 10, 15, 20 minutes, whatever we want to do, and talk about what's happening in the market, what we're seeing in the market, all that kind of stuff. Because uh, I think there are some interesting things going on today. Uh, and I think there's some interesting opportunities. And I just kind of want to talk to because I think I think some people are flying back into growth stocks, which I want to talk about. So hit on that. So I just need to post this link uh, to everyone in the Patreon. Okay, getting there, getting there. Hope everyone's doing well today. Uh, looks like indexes are a little bit sideways today but looks like growth is doing fairly well, I'd say overall. I think it's more green than it is red. And there are a lot of penny stocks that are really moving right now. So I, I think that is good to see because there is some money flowing back in. Now, is that money just from crypto? Who knows? Because crypto is being hit kind of hard today. There's a lot of manipulation, it looks like. So um, we're gonna, gonna take a look at that. So overall, I will share my screen here. Feel free to drop questions too. Uh, maybe I'll do a couple minutes of talk and we'll do some a uh, couple minutes of questions too. Sam says, uh, what do you think about Ethereum? Buy now or wait for a good dip? So I hold Ethereum. I'm not selling it right now, but I'm also not buying it. I mean, we saw it hit under 2000 just a few days ago. There's a lot of uncertainty. So I think if you're, if you're looking long-term with Ethereum, I think it's fine to buy, but I know a lot of people are thinking, okay, what if it goes down to 2000 and then it drops down 20% and I could have gotten it for, uh, so I, I think if you are willing to buy it and think long-term, I think you're going to do really well. But if you're worried about in the short term, uh, yeah, it, it, it's a crap shoot, whether it goes up to 3000 by tomorrow or down to 2000 right now, if you haven't seen the video that I did earlier today, kind of on some of the uncertainty and FUD in the market. There are a lot of people trying to manipulate the crypto market right now. So uh, delivery detail says, uh, which penny stocks are booming? So let me let me pull this up here because I do have them up. One second here. And you say also the only reason crypto is so popular right now is because of the stock market February decline. I think that definitely has something to do with it, right? Uh, but I, I think a lot of the money is necessarily in uh, a lot of, what am I trying to say? A lot of retail traders aren't putting all their money uh, in crypto. And then the institutions, I don't think are moving from, let's say, uh, I don't know, STEM, moving from STEM over to V chain or something like that, like a smaller crypto, like big organizations, I don't think are buying smaller crypto still. I think that's a lot of retail money, but yeah, crypto has done well. And I think, I think it's one of those chicken or the egg things, right? Did people move money out of the stock market because of the crypto market or did people move money into the crypto market because of the stock market? So some stocks are doing well. We have ABML. They came out, they had some good news the other day. Uh, let me see if I can pull that up because I forgot exactly what it was, but I was reading about it. Uh, just the other day, and this is really like a long-term play on me. Oh yeah, so they had their, they had the application they filed to list on the Nasdaq exchange. So they jumped up pretty significantly. I think that was yesterday or the day before, and then they've just continuously gone up since then. Because I remember, I think they were right under a dollar recently. Then we have HMBL jumping seventeen percent today. Now this one humble has been hit hard uh, since they did the reverse stock split. Another one. I'm holding these ones. I bought a certain amount. I'm not looking to sell it. These are longer term plays. They're high risk, high reward, like 50% chance they go up to you know, five, $10 in the next five or 10 years and 50% chance they just continuously decline. So that's why I always talk about like just a small allocation to some of these. Check is up 12%, Corporate Universe 11%, Hims and Hers is up 11%, Virgin Galactic, which has been hit hard, up 8%, STEM 7.5%. Conversion Labs just continuously is having this um, this push up, right? And they they got an upgrade from analysts. That's where it's so important to know what you're buying and to not panic when it falls. Like I know a lot of people uh, bought in when it was high. I did too. It was in the 20s when I bought. 
Uh, I sold part of it at the top, like right around 30. And then I bought most of it back. Um, so I held it at 30. I was already up like 20%, 25%, like in a week or something. Then it fell all the way down to $6 or so. Now it's 100% up from there. In the last like three or four days, this thing's had an amazing run. Let's pull it up here. If we go to the, we'll go to the 15 minute charts or one hour charts. So since the 13th, uh, it was in the sixes, mid six, and it's just been green candles, green candles all the way. But if we look at the, if we look here, it was all the way up at 30 and then just fell and fell and fell and fell and fell. Now we're seeing a little bit of a recovery. So that's why I think it's just really important to know what you're actually buying and to be comfortable if it does fall down. I might trim this here soon. If it keeps on going up, I might, I, I would really like to recoup my cost basis on it. Uh, but I wouldn't mind trimming a little bit because uh, there are some, there are some issues with the telehealth industry. So I, I would rather uh, probably move more into Teladoc than, than some of these smaller ones, but there's still potential there. Gore's holding up a good amount today too, after like a 20% day yesterday. Uh, let's see, do we have any questions? Want to make sure that I'm not just rambling here. Uh, let's see. Okay. What do I think about Neo? Good question. Uh, so that's another one that's been smashed. I'm just going to pull up the stock price. It's 3450. I'll be honest. It's still $43 billion. So if we do actually continuously get hit hard in, in growth, this one I think will get smashed uh, because it is a $40 billion market cap. Uh, I mean, it's, it's fallen down a lot already. It's, it's at an interesting level though, because we've seen massive support around this level, right around like 31, 32. So, okay, if the market sells off, will it break through those supports? That's tough to tell. I haven't done a comparison with it in a while based on their deliveries, but they are continuously increasing deliveries. And if you want a Chinese competitor besides Tesla, they're one of the best options. So I would rather go with something like Neo than I would Xpeng or uh, Li, just because I think there is less risk and it has been hit hard. I don't have anything in Neo right now. Uh, I would rather have Tesla than Neo just because they are doing so much more. I know that's being valued what at like 15x what Neo is, and they're not doing 15x the deliveries, but they have so many different parts of their business that at with Tesla at current valuation, I would pick it above Neo just long term uh, because Neo already is a 40 billion dollar car company. And I don't know what they have besides EV. I, I, I'm not sure. I'm probably not the best person to ask about that either. Cause I don't, like I said, I don't know if they're doing more than EV or if it's just EV. Can an altcoin surpass a Bitcoin because of coin economics? Uh, I think it depends on what you're talking about I'm, because I don't see, uh, I think you're talking about tokenomics. I don't see like the smaller cryptocurrencies that have tokenomics like burns and stuff like that becoming $1 trillion, but because they, there's less of them, if they stay around for a while, the price could go up, but the, and the market cap could stay the same because they're less in circulation. I could see an altcoin like Ethereum or Cardano surpassing Bitcoin though, probably in the next bull run. A lot of people are in that might happen. How slow is your internet? Pretty slow. I think it's my computer too. I really need a new computer because the screen just lags a little bit. Uh, so I, I'll probably have to get that in the next couple months. Elon Musk really influences the crypto market and it sucks. Yeah. And, and there's more manipulation than just him too. Like there, there are whales out there that are manipulating the market. And yeah, uh, Biden's new tax plans. Yeah. There's definitely a lot happening right now trying to push it down. And it's just much more, it's much easier to manipulate. It's what a $1.5 trillion market. It's a lot of Amazon's market cap. What do I think about the possibility for a big liquidation if Tesla drops even more? Uh, like BTC, I believe there's a lot of leverage trading in Tesla uh, and that could bring the stock down more. I could see that happening. Yeah, but I think there are a lot of people that are willing to buy the dip. So 
like uh, you were comparing it to BTC, right? With the leverage trading, the difference is there are revenues and earnings and projections for Tesla. And everyone just has a price target for Bitcoin based on this, that, or the other thing, whether it's gold or whether it is uh, how quickly it's grown in the past, looking at the charts to see how much it will grow in the future, whether it's widespread adoption. But again, like if you start getting too low in a stock, it starts to become really attractive. And I don't think there's going to be the type of manipulation that you see with like smaller cap stocks like uh, LFMD, right? The one that we we're just looking at in a short seller report when it was already going down and when growth was selling off in general. So that pushed it down like another, what, 60% after it was already down 40%. So that is easy to do with a couple, like a couple billion dollar market cap. But to do that with a 600 billion, like if they go and make a short report, no one's going to believe it. There would have to be like a lot more fear, uncertainty and doubt. Like, hey, there's some problem with Tesla's factories. Uh, Elon Musk just had a heart attack or something. Not saying that that would ever happen or should happen, but like there would have to be a lot happening and and it would have to be very orchestrated compared to a certain stock or even Bitcoin. Uh, what do I think about FRSX and Aero right now? Those are my biggest positions. Uh, so I have a little bit in FRSX. I haven't really kept up with it. I'll be honest since I bought it just because it, again, it was one of those plays where like I put some money in it, uh, but it's a longer term play. It's uh to worry about it's um, put some money in but not make a major position at this because of my risk tolerance aro i was looking at when dead inside was talking about it so so many people were asking me about this when it was like seven eight dollars and dead inside talked about it it went up a lot and at that point i thought okay it just need i can't buy it when it's already up this much so i was waiting now it is at a interesting price so i'd have to look at the fundamentals i don't know how much cash they have uh, that would be interesting. So, uh, let me share my screen cause I'm doing a bad job of that. Uh, I'm, cause if their balance sheet is pretty strong, then it would be a really interesting company. Cause a lot of these companies like Aero did end up building up a cash reserve when the price went up so much. So if you know their balance sheet, okay. Total cash, 91 million. I'm gonna on the I'm going to have to put this on the list here. That means that the under the actual business is only worth what 80 billion or 80 million. So yeah, it starts down more. That's where I really like some of these companies. Like when NNDM fell to $5 kind of bands up to, up to like $6, 620, 640. So I bought call options made 30% in a day. And that's, that's pretty attractive and it's because their market cap was below their their cash uh holding so i mean it could go down below that that's not like it's not a for sure thing but i was really willing to take the risk young investor how's it going saw your live stream the other day uh keep it up man uh, why would you sell eth to buy bitcoin and incur a taxable event good question so i didn't actually have a taxable event let me explain I actually had a tax write-off from it. Um, so in one of my portfolios, I'm up a ton on Ethereum and Bitcoin because I bought uh, I bought months ago in it. I started buying more in Voyager recently. So I bought the other day on the dip, like when Ethereum and Bitcoin and ADA dipped 30, 40% within a few hours. Uh, what was that Wednesday morning, two days ago in the morning? I bought a decent amount. I already had some in there just from averaging down over the last couple months when it had been falling, but it was very insignificant compared to what I had in the other portfolio. But I wanted to move some money from ETH to Bitcoin in case there is, um, let's say, a bear market. I think Bitcoin will do better. I, th I think Ethereum will do well too in the bear market as opposed to some of the smaller altcoins. But I thought that will hedge against it a little bit. And I had more Ethereum overall. Uh, than I did have in Bitcoin because Ethereum had gone up like three, four X for me at the peak. So I'm still up uh, over a hundred percent on ETH. So I had like, uh, what, $18,000 in ETH and only 12 or 13,000 in Bitcoin or 15,000 in Bitcoin. So I sold, I sold like two grand of it. So maybe 10% of it and put it in Bitcoin. Uh, I also get six and a quarter percent in Voyager, which is really nice. But I thought I should diversify a little bit more into Bitcoin because I had a lot of ETH. 
And in that portfolio, I was actually down at that point, like a couple hundred dollars. So I thought, okay, I'm not going to take the taxable event. Then it will actually be a write-off because I lost money on the investment. Then I put it somewhere else, which is nice in the long term, I guess, or in the short, short term, it's nice. So now I have more equal Bitcoin and Ethereum. What are my opinions on plug long term? So I covered plug a long time ago. I've never invested in it. Uh, I... I think it's a turn. Uh, I think it's a play for like five, ten years from now. I haven't looked at the the news updates since probably like six months ago, four months ago, when it was really going up dramatically. But uh, it, I, I favorites that too much. I never covered it too much. Until penny stock, I covered it when it was five dollars. Um, like a year ago, and then it shot up. Now it's down to 28 when it was at 73. Yeah, and it fell down to 20. So I think I think it's probably good if you're looking really long term, but you might have some better buying in prices in the future. I just don't know enough about it, to be honest. Yeah, Greenpeace not accepting Bitcoin. Yeah, I know. That was interesting. Happened to come out right when everything else came out. Is GHBI up because of new hires? Does this mean the ticker change is happening? Are you talking about GHVI? Uh, I'm not sure why it was up. I was trying to see that yesterday. I really like uh, I really like GHVI, but I wasn't sure exactly. It just been, it just hit down so hard. I figured it might just be because of that, right? Like it's a great company. It's a solid company. Like it's been around a long time. If you guys don't know, they're Matterport. They have like these scanners in homes for Redfin. It could be used for insurance. It could be used all over the place. And yes, it was at a it was at a decent valuation, let's say that, because it was back when SPACs were like you could throw any valuation. Like you could create you could have plans for an aircraft carrier and it'd be like an eight billion dollar valuation. Uh, but with this, I think it's around I, I forgot the exact valuation. It is multi billions, but it had gone down to ten dollars and fifty cents or something. So I think it's time for it to move back up because if you're looking years out, it's a great company. It's just a question of the valuation. Finance, good to see you. Thanks for joining in. Uh, okay, I'm getting behind in the messages a little bit. I should I should blow through these a little bit quicker. What growth stocks are you going to focus on for the rest of 2021 and 2022? Andrew, I saw you join the Patreon again. Thank you for joining that. I remember you were one of the first people in the Patreon. Okay, so what am I focusing on? for the rest of 2021 and 2022. Okay, I, this is how I think about it. I am willing to focus on whatever is at the best valuation. So like if I'm going to I'm going to list some stocks here, but if I list some stocks and then they go up 100% or 50% or something like that or they they go up or stay the same even, whatever. And then some other stocks that I had never even looked at before or maybe I had looked at, but didn't really love them. They fall down 50%. I'll, I'll switch which ones I want to put capital into based on the valuation. Now that's easy to say, but that doesn't really help uh, unless you're talking about like on a daily basis. So companies that I really like right now and the ones that I feel very bullish on, I just did a video on it the other day. People don't watch the stock market videos anymore. It seems like, but uh, a tattooed chef, I think is one of one of the better risk reward there. Uh, if you're not looking for a company that's going to grow, you know, 100% in the next year, if you're looking at a company that's going to grow maybe 100% in the next four or five years, maybe a little bit more than that. Tattoo Chef, tons of cash in a growing industry, better valuation than its competitors, still has a lot of places to grow, and their product is really solid. Another one, Palantir is a little bit more of a risk reward, I think, than Tattoo Chef. Way more. Uh, maybe not way more upside because it's already valued at 40 billion, but good upside. A lot of people don't understand how to value it yet. Palantir is an interesting one. Uh, I really want to see what they do over the next year. I want to see if they can actually grow that commercial part of their business because they are they are going to give their software for free to different commercial businesses as opposed to government businesses because they need to grow their commercial side. So they're going to give that away for free. That's going to be interesting to see, okay, can they bring these companies in and hold them because their technology is so good and then increase their revenue in that side of their business. The other one 
it's COSK, but that one is very dependent on Bitcoin. And right now, I said this in the Patreon earlier, I don't know if you guys saw this, but with all the manipulation in stocks or in, in crypto, it offers some really interesting opportunities. Even if you don't like crypto specifically, like you don't want to invest in crypto, the crypto related stocks will fall down with the manipulation in crypto. Like Bitcoin fell five or 10% today and like CLSK stock is down. Well, if this happens and people are able to manipulate the crypto market, but long term, people want it to go up for the most part, like people that hold it, the whales want it to go up and they're going to keep on buying. What they're doing is they're manipulating the short term to buy it at a lower price because they feel so strongly about it. So they're willing to manipulate it. It's not regulated. It's technically legal, I guess. Uh, so they're doing that. Um, but that affects the stocks that affects the crypto related stocks. And you can buy those at a discount and they're not being manipulated directly, but because they are related to crypto, they are being manipulated and they have a third of their market cap in cash like that. That's significant. They have, uh, they're profitable and they have one point or 170 million in cash and they hold Bitcoin on their balance sheet in addition to the 170 million. They barely have any liabilities, not even $10 million in liabilities. Interesting risk reward. It's just a question of, can they really scale up like they want to, which we really will see that in the next quarter because they were mining about the same throughout this quarter, but they have big expectations for the summer. So will they be able to ramp that up and where does Bitcoin go? Do I see skills going up again? Uh, Enrique, uh, I I think skills will go up. The question is how soon? Uh, it's it's one of those ones that just has been hit hard by short sellers, by uh, by the growth market sell off. Like people just aren't buying it, and they don't believe in the they don't believe in the narrative like they did a month or two ago. Now, long term, uh, I I think it's going to do well. Video games in general are going to do well. This is going to be something that it can change uh can change the game a little bit in this way uh so i i think it could be interesting the question is how long does it take to recover the thing is so many of these are manipulated too by just analysts like oh this analyst downgrades it, it goes down 10 percent is uh, this analyst upgrades it, it goes up 30 percent. so it's hard to know exactly what the analysts will do a lot of the time they're they're behind the times. Like it starts going up and they're like, yeah, we'll raise it. And then it pushes up more, or it starts falling down. We got to downgrade this thing. <laughs> and then they'll downgrade it and it'll fall more. Jim Cramer is increasingly negative about Kathy Wood, ARK Invest. Are they being objective or are they uh, trying to run down the new kid on the block? I think it's really easy to be negative about someone like Kathy Wood when they are when they're not earning money like they were already kind of negative about her before like if warren buffett was getting outsized returns they would be talking about how he's one of the best investors of all time if kathy wood does that they're talking about how the bull market is insane and how we'll have a rotation back into like the the normal sectors the recovery sectors or something they like the they are just different about growth, I think, than they are solid uh, blue chip stocks. Now, uh, they they change though. Like Jim can be super positive about Lordstown Motors a year ago and how it's going to be a great company, and then they can turn on it. Like I, I guess anyone can, and that is kind of their prerogative, right? That that it can do whatever they want, and like if. You're an investor looking from the outside. You think probably Kathy Wood is a great investor who's not doing well. So um, I think that they tend to go with what people are saying, though, because that's just good for the channel if they if they keep uh, investors watching. I'm down a lot in Coinbase and Teladoc. Do you think I should still hold? Uh, I think I, I think you should know what you're buying. So if you feel like different at, from a fundamental level in Coinbase and Teladoc then sure. The question is, what's actually influencing this opinion? Is it because it's down a lot? Usually when I'm down a lot, I just want to add more. Like Coinbase, the the bear case is what if crypto goes through a really tough time? Uh, then you can pick up Coinbase later for much cheaper 
or there's zero fees in the future, stuff like that. Teladoc is, oh, uh, there are so many different platforms out there. They're just not going to be able to charge as much in the future and stuff like that. Both of those, I think, are valid reasons to not, uh, you know, put too much money in it, like not go overweight in your portfolio on it. But I'm more bullish than bearish because I think I think crypto's here to stay. I think these uh, subscription models for healthcare are going to be here to stay, and a lot of their revenue come from subscriptions in Teladoc. Uh, they're in a pretty good situation right now. They're still growing. The next year isn't going to be as extreme growth as we've seen, seen in the past, but last year was an insane year. Coinbase could fall further, right? It could be 200 by two weeks from now, and I would not be surprised. But if they if there's volatility in the crypto market, it's only good for Coinbase. Like, sure, it would be great if Bitcoin went up to 100,000 and everything else went up 3x2. But if it stays there and it does not fluctuate in price, they don't make money. or They make some money, but they don't make as much money. I don't have a lot of thoughts on RKT. Uh, I haven't done like a deep dive on it in a long time. Uh, same thing with F cell, honestly. Let me let me pull up F cell though. Yeah, fuel cell is another one. Uh, just haven't looked up a lot into it. Natural gas and biogas. Okay, what's my latest price prediction for BTC? Um, okay, so. That's one of those things like you're kind of shooting in the dark. Like I can throw something out there, but uh, what's it backed up by? Just my own thinking. Uh, and it's it's more speculative than like, hey, we're going to grow at this percent revenue. This is the price to sales ratio at this point or price to earnings. So if we keep that, then it should be at this price. So it's going to be a little bit more speculative. I think it's really going to, I think it will get up back to old highs. Um, of course, not financial advice or anything like that. And then I think, I think there's a good chance that it goes up further than all time highs, but not up to 100K, uh, just because of the fact that so many people will be wanting it to get up to 100K and then they'll sell off right beforehand. Uh, but I don't think the lows will be as low as this by the end of the year. Like, even if it, even if people sell off, if it hits 80, 90K, I don't think it will fall down to 30 or something like that, because there'll be too many people that are buying in longer term. Okay. Uh, they have two VPs hired yesterday and today. I was talking about GHVI. Weeble has, okay, sweet. I'll have to take a look at those articles. Um, I'm curious who they joined, who joined them. Okay, sorry, I'm, I'm stuck a little bit behind. I thought I was doing a good job, but I'm getting, I'm getting into these questions. Cardano, hopefully five by the end of the year. Yeah, I hope so. A lot of people think more than that with everything that's over the summer. Uh, Taylor, love. Uh, thanks for your work. Love the updates in Discord. Awesome. Well, I appreciate that. I'm glad that I saved you from work course in time. Uh, yeah, I, I, unfortunately, I was literally talking to my dad about something for like 20 minutes. And usually I don't, I was like, I hadn't talked to him in a while. Uh, so I, I was talking to him and all that happened right when I was having the conversation. So I didn't see my phone blowing up and then I got to it like 20 minutes late. So I did lose a couple dollars probably in share price, but we also sold out at like 20 as opposed to what, what did it fall down to? It's is it in single digits right now. I know it was, uh, it might've come back a little bit, but it's just one of those things where it's one of those things where workhorse was an interesting risk reward ratio. It just didn't work out. So like if you play enough of those and you are, let's say 60% of the time on something, high risk, high reward, there are going to be times where, yeah, it like sucks and it falls down a lot. But uh, but over time, it should be okay. Like it should average out. Do I still hold ACIC? Uh, no. So I, I sold this months ago. I did post about it. I, I talked about it in a video and in the Patreon a couple times. Um, I sold it. So when we started back sell off and once I looked at the valuation for ACIC again, I thought that with with how highly it was valued, it's too much risk because they're being valued at like five, four or $5 billion. And that's fine when everything is bullish and valuations don't matter. But long-term, uh, I, I figured it might get a push, um, but then SPAC sell off valuations are very important right now. Of course, they're always important long-term, but for a while we were just riding the SPACs, right? Like 20% a day. But with that one, 
the valuation was too risky. I sold out. Um, I don't remember where I sold out at, but then I put in something else. What do you think DraftKings? DraftKings is super interesting right now. Like uh, I haven't done a comparison between DraftKings and some of the other gambling stocks recently, but DraftKings I've seen has fallen into the mid 40s. I am seriously considering buying more. Hubert says, thanks. Uh, well, great. I, I appreciate that. I try to make sure that like, like I said, uh, I've said this before too. I just want to make sure that I am being like level headed and trying to give you guys information for what's happening. Cause I don't want people panic selling. Like that's the worst thing in the world. If I see someone panic sell uh, because of some manipulation and then it goes back, whatever it is, goes back up. And then you just lose out because someone like was playing on the fact that you don't have access to your phone and research all the time. And they do cause they're millionaires, billionaires. So uh, that's why I give like some morning like briefings afternoon and stuff like that. I like doing that because I think it's really important because we don't all have time to spend around our phones all day. And if you see something fall down 40% because there's some allegations of a short report or something that that sucks either way, but I'd rather have it suck and you hold on and then it goes back up than, than have everyone panic or something like that. Bullish on DraftKings and TTCF. Yeah, me too. I've tried uh, skills games. They still don't have any monetization ads and their interface hasn't changed. Uh, they seem to be making money, but I expect way more progress on a tech stock. Yeah, uh, I haven't tried out any of the skills games. So I still haven't bought skills at any point. When do I think BNGO will pump again past 10? That's a tough one. I think it's once they get some revenue. Once they have some big partnerships, and they start getting revenue. The thing is, BNGO is really hard to value. Like when I bought it at a dollar twenty-five, it was still hard to value then. Like I, I was buying it because of different stuff than the price to sales, the earnings, the underlying um, fundamentals, right? I was buying it because of enough things that were positive catalysts that it was worth the risk reward. The question is, once it's up 400 percent from there. Uh, how do you value it? What What is a better option, that or something else? So I think it's once they actually get some results and not just like, hey, we published a new study where this percent effective. Okay. Uh, BurgerFi, I've not looked into really. Weirdly enough, crypto crashes are good for mining companies because of the increased fees when all the blockchain is congested. Hmm. Hillian. Uh, yeah, uh, I haven't looked at Hylion in a while. SFTW, uh, Ashish, I, I'm not sure if you're in the Patreon or not, but I dumped SFTW a couple, what was that, last week? Um, when we had that massive crash in the morning, I I had a lot of uh, gunpowder in SFTW and it had been sitting there. I bought it when the market was falling down and I thought, okay, I'm still buying pre arc X when I was buying SFTW. So I thought there might be a pump there. If SPACs come back, there would be a pump there. And really it fell down maybe 5% or something since I bought a significant amount. Cause it was my largest position at one point in my individual stock portfolio. And then I sold it because there were so many other deals that were like, that weren't going to be stuck at $10 or 990. So I actually sold it at like $9.95 below net asset value. I put it over in uh in Palantir and Tattooed Chef and CLSK maybe. Um all when they were down like 20 30% from where they are now just because there were so many deals. So I think SFTW still can be good in the future. It's just there are so many other things that are I think better valuation while because again valuation really does matter they're less catalyst than sftw had three four months ago uh, are you on margin uh no not really uh the reason i say not really is i just signed up to get an m1 finance loan on one of my portfolios it's only like two thousand dollars it's like two percent of my portfolio but i just wanted to see how well it worked and how easy it was because I thought that might be nice in the future in case I don't want as much in an emergency fund or something like that. And it's my dividend portfolio. It's at like 2% or something. It's actually free right now because of the promo. So I thought, ah, I'll try it out to see um, how how I can repay it and stuff like that. Because uh, I don't think they have any repayment schedule either. So I thought that would be really nice. 
uh, and I'll just put it back in there in like a couple months or something because I don't need it. But I thought, uh, yeah, I'll try it out. Do I look at the VIX levels every day? Yeah. So I have it pulled up on one of my uh, on my overall portfolio or my not my overall portfolio, my watch list. Uh, we'll probably wrap this up here. SPWR, SunPower, haven't looked into it. Um, Sen seems to be holding up well for a penny stock. Yeah, a lot of penny stocks are actually doing fairly well the last week or so. Do you think it's better to put money in BlockFi instead of a traditional savings account? Is it risky? Yeah, it's riskier, but it's also it also pays way better. Like there's a risk reward to it. I don't think it's I don't think it's very risky because actually at one point I had like I had all the money that I was putting into my house into my BlockFi portfolio to get an interest rate. Uh, the the worst case scenario is there's a run somehow on stable coins and they loaned out stable coins or the company goes bankrupt, but they have it through Gemini. So I'm still not sure if the company went bank bank uh, bankrupt, uh, what would happen exactly there? I think, I think that's where the risk reward comes in, right? So they are taking your money and loaning it out and they're giving you like an, a 10% interest rate. So that's one of those things where like, I'm going to put money in there into the stable coin uh, but I'm not going to put every single penny that I need in there. Like if I'm holding on to, let's say I hold like $20,000 worth of cash, I would put probably $10,000 in there and then keep the rest, uh, in my account or something like that, just in case the 1% chance does happen or the 0.1% chance or whatever happens. Um, I would, I would just, uh, consider that plus let's say like, let's say there's a maintenance issue or something and you need the money for some reason. Like the other day, all the crypto exchanges went down for an hour. If you needed the money, then it does take a few days. So it's just something where you want some money in other accounts too, but I still like it a lot. Like I'm going to, I'm going to put a lot of money in there because it pays 10%. Uh, RKT need an update. Yeah. I don't, like I said, I don't really cover RKT. I don't really talk about it too much. I haven't really done that much research on it recently. Uh, I thought EV box was a serious company. can't believe the deal might not come through. Yeah, that's tough. Um, still unsure whether they're going to actually go through that. I remember you making uh, a video on MG and I, am I still holding it? No. So I did, I did sell that a while ago. Um, I think I can't remember exactly um, what happened with it. I think I made a little bit of profit, uh, but then I did sell it. Um, just haven't covered it much. I, I sold it way before it pumped even, I think, cause it went all the way up to 61, 62, uh, now down about 50%. So yeah, I haven't, I haven't looked at it in a while. Um, I don't think I held it for a very long time. And that's something that I, I'm always cautious about because, uh, I feel bad cause I know some people don't like see all my updates. So I, I post every single thing that I buy and sell. Uh, in the Patreon, but I also know like some people don't want to go through five or six messages and read them all. So uh, yeah, that's just something that is difficult there. When the downward pressure of when the downward pressure on the growth mo- uh, growth stocks will be released. Um, so I think I think to this week we've seen a lot of upward momentum, which is great. Uh, I think that definitely is helping out the general market. I think it's going to be once inflation fears have gone away a little bit. So I think that is something that we have to wait for because we don't like we still have inflation coming throughout the year. And a lot of people are thinking that the stock market is going to get better, uh, at least in terms of like the growth stocks later in the year, probably around September. I think it will do better during the summer because people will be gearing up for better inflation data. Uh, But we do have some negative catalysts too, like uh, we can't fool ourselves here. The Fed's going to stop repurchasing bonds so much or um, putting so much money into bonds and stuff. Also, there there's just some, like there's going to be less stimulus. There's going to be less uh, money just thrown in the market like that. So the question is, okay, is the economy really solid? And then, uh, and then will these stocks continuously do well? So uh, that's where... There's going to be less funny money later, but uh, hopefully we pick out companies that are continuously growing over the next couple of years, so they won't be hit as hard. Uh, I think I think the stock market will still do well over the next couple of years, but there are negative catalysts. There's a lot of fear and that kind of stuff. 
How was BlockFi able to pay 10%? Uh, is there in any other circumstance that would be highly, that suspiciously high? Yeah, so what they're doing, the reason that they are able to pay so much, first of all, is they know that you'll invest in crypto. So even if you put 10% in stablecoin, the majority of people will buy crypto with that at some point uh, when it does dip. So they're willing to take a little bit of a bet on that. And also they lend this out to other institutions, like all these different brokers that pay interest rates. When you sign up, you give them the authority to like buy, sell, manipulate, or whatever they do uh, with, with, I shouldn't say manipulate, but do whatever they want to with the assets. Now you can still, you can still pull your money out because there's enough people in it, but they're loaning it out to other hedge funds to oftentimes it. So they're buying it and shorting it or borrowing it and shorting it. And they're willing to pay 10, 12% uh, for that ability. And then they're paying you, BlockFi is paying you 10% of it. Uh, do I think there will be a correction in the S&P soon? I wouldn't be surprised if there was a correction, right? Correction, not crash, 10%. 10% could happen pretty quickly. Um, and I think overall, the economy is doing really well. Um, but I'm not sure if a correction would even be bad for the S&P 500 because more money, I think, would possibly flow into some of the growth stocks. Uh, I mean, it is very high right now, right? We're are we up 100% like over the last year since the bottom of the pandemic? I think we're close to it, at least in the S&P 500. Uh, am I planning on buying Doge if it goes down with Bitcoin? No, I, if if Dogecoin goes down, I probably won't touch it. I would rather buy, if the whole market's going down, I'd rather buy Cardano, Bitcoin, and Ethereum. But uh, I appreciate it, guys, and, and ladies, too. Appreciate you guys all being here. I just wanted to do this video. Um, I know it's like uh, Friday afternoon. Hopefully, you know, you guys are gearing up for a fun weekend. Thank you guys so much. I appreciate it. Of course, none of this is financial advice, and I will see you guys in the next video. Bye.